Hi, I'm Tintin Wisniewski from the Hoover Institution. Hoover's Corette Task Force on K-12 Education, with the help of some friends, has attempted to project what American education might look like in the year 2030. By that time, today's newborn will become college freshmen. The task of looking so far ahead while fre refreshing is also quite formidable. We invite you to join us in this predictive video presentation in search for solutions to the challenges that American education faces in the years ahead. For more information about this project, please visit our website at AmericanEducation2030.com. John Chubb is a distinguished visiting fellow at the Hoover Institution, where he specializes in education policy, school choice, and student achievement. He dramatizes the powerful impact of technology on inner city schools and their students between now and 2030. Hi, I'm John Chubb, and I'm reporting to you from the year 2030. I've just attended a remarkable event, the commencement at the University of Pennsylvania, one of the nation's most prestigious universities, and there I had the honor of watching a young man whom we'll call Rashid graduate from the University of Pennsylvania. Rashid's graduation is a remarkable event because in 2009, when he was born, it never would have been predicted. Rashid grew up in an impoverished neighborhood in West Philadelphia. His mother was an 18-year-old single mom who had dropped out of high school, like 50% of the kids. Back in 2009, only 3% of the kids in Rashid's neighborhood graduated from any college at all, let alone a prestigious university. But here in 2030, Rashid graduated. And Rashid's graduation is not today all that unusual. 25% of all African-American kids are earning college degrees. That's a dramatic increase. And 90% of all African-American kids are graduating from high school. What brought about this remarkable change in circumstances for kids like Rashid? Well, the bottom line is that the public schools that they, that they attend improved dramatically. So how did that happen? Well, it's a bit of a long story, and it begins in the 1980s and the 1990s when reformers recognized that public schools were underperforming and tried hard to improve them. But the results were rather disappointing, and in fact, in Philadelphia, they were so disappointing that in 2001, the state took over the schools. The state took radical measures that were also being taken around the country. They imposed tough accountability, insisting that the schools produce rising test scores for kids, and they injected competition into the system, inviting charter schools into the, into the school system and inviting private companies into the school system and universities to provide more alternatives for kids. In response to that, test scores began to improve, graduation rates began to improve, but more important, the system became open to new ideas. This was very important for Rashid when he entered kindergarten. The school that he entered decided to try to innovate and compete by adopting technology. And this was fortuitous for Rashid because like a lot of kids at that time, he loved computers. And computers had become relatively inexpensive, and even low-income families had computers at home. Well, Rashid loved playing the games. He took to it very naturally. So when he got to uh, kindergarten and first grade and found it difficult to read because he hadn't been exposed to lots of books, he turned to technology programs, programs that allowed him to practice his decoding skills using voice recognition technology and get better and better at the skills that are critical for fluent reading. By the time Rashid finished third grade, he was reading on grade level. And that is so important because reading on grade level is the best predictor at third grade of being successful in the rest of your school years. Well, when Rashid got to middle school, what he found was that core courses that had in the past not always been available to kids like him or not had always been taught at the best of levels were now being taught using technology and online instruction. Rashid took Algebra I online, like a lot of his classmates, in seventh grade, and that set him up for success uh, in high school. The other thing that happened in his schools that was really important is that because kids were using more technology, the schools needed to hire fewer teachers, and needing to hire fewer teachers, they were able to raise the quality 
of the teachers that were teaching in Rashid's schools and other inner city schools. So by the time Rashid entered high school, he was on grade level and fully prepared to take advantage of high schools which were dramatically changed at that point. High schools in response to all kinds of online and technological competition had become fully hybrid institutions. Kids spent part of their time in regular classes. They spent part of their time learning on computers at school. They spent part of their time learning on computers at home and in internships and in jobs. High school became a much more engaging and successful experience from which Rashid graduated on time with 90% of his classmates and then from there was able to gain admission to a prestigious and competitive university. Quite a success story but not happily a success story confined to Rashid and to the city of Philadelphia. Nationwide, we saw these kinds of improvements. Competition, other providers in the public school marketplace, accountability for results, and also, and in some ways most importantly, technological progress made it possible to reach kids in all kinds of ways, and especially kids like Rashid. Technology is blind to income and race and birth circumstances, everybody can participate in it equally. And as a consequence of this, more and more kids, record numbers in 2030, are able to participate fully in all that the 21st century has to offer.